going on everybody to another video of Dead but it, my name is Cuba Dutch and today we're using Score Merchant as always using a really interesting build that I will show you in the actual video but first I want to show y'all uh, the survivors we're fighting against. The build is using powder glass plus of course battle targeting process to slow down people. Powder glass, the add-on where basically it makes survivors uh, hemorrhage and mangled if you hit them and they, if they have a claw trap on them. And the whole point of this build is basically get every single survivor injured keep them injured, and make it so that way it's harder for them to heal. That way we can use Thanophobia to make the generator get slowed down by 16% constantly. Also, everyone's injured. We don't have to worry about even really using our drones anymore because all we need is one hit. And it's actually a really good build that I recommend you using. The main reason why I actually made this build was because I love Thanophobia. It's one of my favorite perks ever. But I feel like Thanophobia is extremely hard to use because it honestly just kind of sucks. But I'll explain more about that in the actual game. I'll get through the game so I can show you how great this build is. Okay, playing on Cold Tower. I actually like this map for Score Merchant. Speaking of maps for Score Merchant, if you like the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I read every single comment you post. Believe me, I read every comment. And I, I respond to also every comment too. If I haven't respond to a comment, it's honestly my own fault and I'll just go back and respond to it. But the reason why I mentioned that is because why is Bill right in front of me? That's weird. Um, because of the fact that, like I told you, I read every comment, and someone uh, asked me a question. They said, can I make a video about uh, every single map when it comes to how good it is or how bad it is against Skull Merchant? Or maybe while using Skull Merchant, I mean. And the answer is 100% yes. Right here, I'm going to become an untetable so I can try to catch the person off guard because they're um, injured. I thought he was going towards the pallet, but he did not. Then I thought he was going to go back around, but he did not. So I'm like, great. So he's injured, but because of the fact that I want to get a Claudio on himself now, I'm going to do this. But then he's like, huh, Skull Merchant is better than me. I can't believe it. She outplayed me, and I am bad, so I'm going to leave the game. And I'm like, okay. So now we lost one person. And this build is Grim Embrace, Dead Man Switch, by the way. Uh... What's it called? Thanophobia and Scorch Hook Gif of Pain. The whole point of this build, like I told you, keep survivors injured, get them injured, make them so they have a hard time healing, and Thanophobia will activate and slow down gens. Because instead of having Scorch Hook Pain Resonance to slow down gens, or Pop Goes the Weasel, or Surge, or Joke, whatever it's called, we have to use Thanophobia instead. And I kind of like it because it makes survivors want to heal, but because they're healing, they're not doing gens, and because they're not doing gens, they're actually. I'm actually kind of regressing gens faster than you would think. Like, if a survivor is healing themselves, not doing a gen. So, because not doing a gen, I don't really have to worry. But, um, yeah, someone asked the video, oh, asked me to make a video basically, um, showcasing every single map that I'm going to be. That's good for Score Merchant. Also, I changed Powder Glass, by the way, for, um, Venom My Strokes. Be the reason why I did that was because of the fact that I realized I don't really need Powder Glass when I'm just going to, um, Put them on a score trick anyway, and I'm going that will make them angled. So I just chose to switch it out for uh random ice tropes, which will slow them down for an extra second when they're claw trapped and hit by a drone. So yes, yeah, that video will be coming out. I don't know when honestly it's gonna come out, but like I said, I read every comment and I definitely will be taking y'all's suggestions. Like for example, Swansy, he wanted me to make a video using um a build where basically i break pallets really fast and i actually recorded that video at the time i'm recording this video that video is actually done i just need to edit it and it turned out really well and i'm honestly excited to showcase that video because it's really funny and then another person commented asking me to use a certain build and they said that they use the build i used the last video i posted by the way was the video where i used the score merchant tech where you can use say best for last on score merchant and you won't have to lose any sacks if someone gets claw trap, if the up touching is claw trap. Someone said they use the exact same build and they recommend use another build and I'm gonna use that build too for a video. So I have so many videos planned for you guys. Like I already have like five videos um, using my own build. Then I have more videos coming out using y'all's build. So, or using, or doing things y'all asked me to do. So because of that reason, um, there'll be lots of videos coming out soon. I am sorry that I haven't uploaded nearly as much as I usually do. It's because, again, if you're new here, I'm in college. If you're not new here, uh, you know I'm in college. But yes, I'm in college. As a result, it is extremely hard to make videos sometimes because I am really busy doing college work and when I really would rather not do it, honestly. But 
because I'm spending so much time doing the college work, I don't have time to make videos sometimes. Right here, the bot literally decides to juke me. I'm like, how in the, is the bot better than the actual players on this team? Insane. So right here, I'm going to try and swing, but he's like pallet. And I'm like, oh, okay. And as a result, I'm going to have to go towards the Knowing Shack and try and, um, what's it called, win? But I can give you some suggestions, by the way, on map. First thing, I'm going to make a video. The video I'm making is going to be, like, over an hour long, most likely. Because not only am I making a video about each map, I'm also going to be making a video... Well, I'm going to be using that same video to talk about drone placements. Drone placements are really, really important when it comes to Storm Merchant. You don't just put drones willy willy nilly on the map. You have to put them in actual good spots. And... As a result, I'm going to make a video about drone placements too. So the same video talking about whether a map is good or not will also be about drone placements. So um, that'll be a really long video, but I am looking forward to it because of the fact that I've been wanting to make this type of video for a long time. I just never, a lie. What happened was I was gonna make the video like months ago. But then, right when I was going to start recording the video, I had to think about how I was going to record it. I could either play against bots and basically try and record the gameplay while bots are in the game, or I will play, or I'll get one of my friends to help me record a video. I asked my friend to help record the video. He said no. So I was like, well, bots it is. Then, right when I was going to start making the video, that's when um, the score merge got reworked. So because you got reworked, I was like, well... There's no point in me making this video now because Storm Merchant got reworked. Her drones play a little differently, and I have more drones. I need to figure out how I made this video. So I decided to change the video, and that's the reason why I didn't upload that video about all the maps. But don't worry, that video will be coming soon. It's going to take a long time, so please be patient with me, but it will be good. Um, one thing I will say, though, is one map that is so good with Storm Merchant is 100% Dead Dog Saloon. I think that's the best map. Of course, when I make the Tillers video, you'll see um, the gameplay and you'll understand why I picked that map. But that map is easily the best map for Score Merchant. It's just hands down the best map for Score Merchant. Um, if you watched Oz Darva's map tier list video, you will notice some similarities between that one and the video I'm making. So that's uh, not only good, but that's basically what's going to be happening. But of course, you know, that map Tillers video was based on maps for just maps in general for killer and survivor. This one is be based on maps that are pertaining to score merchant. Like for example, there are some maps that are insanely good for killer, but for score merchant they're not even like amazing. And one of those maps actually is gonna be um midwich elementary school. I'll talk about that map uh, um, a little bit when I get to the actual video. But it's a little sneak peek on what's gonna be happening. But like I said, drone placement is really important. One thing about drone placement that I will say is like how right now I've been posting, I mean, I've been um, putting drones in really good locations. You have to realize the map changes every single time you um, play. So as a result, uh, it will be, uh, the drone placements will be a little bit different based on how the map loads out, even though I'm on the same map. But right here, this girl is like, I got out. And I'm like, yes, you did. But I don't even care because that was the first video, I mean, the first game. I'm sorry the game kind of ended really badly, honestly. Like what happened was I literally was chasing someone and then he was like, Ugh. I don't feel like playing a scar merge and then he left so but that always happens so i'm not really worried about that but anyway let's go to the next game so i can show you how great this build is okay on the thompson house i hate this map oh uh, just so you know this map is not good for scar merge <laughs> just so you know that but this map is dumb i hate this map it's mainly because uh you'll you'll hear me talk about this during the scrum merchant video also you hear me talk about it like in every video i make with scrum merchant big maps are terrible for scrum merchant it is that simple the bigger the map is the worse it is for scrum merchant because she has to traverse all the gens and you're not going to want to do that when you play killer it's very simple that's kind of why again there's certain maps like for example there's one map that people think is really bad but i actually find it perfectly fine when I play Skull Merchant, so uh, that video will be so that, like, just living things like that also, some of these, uh, well, not really some of these the entire thing is my opinion, because literally it's my opinion, but, um one thing you will see is that, um uh, I want y'all to comment on that video, because I know, for example 
I think Shelter Woods is a pretty good map, actually, for Skull Merchant. It doesn't have one big flaw where it is a kind of big map. Because I noticed that the maps where the, um, where there's, like, no main building, but there is a, um, there's no main building, but there is a, whatchamacallit, a shack are the ones that are, like, kind of big, but the shack's in the middle. But then they changed Shelter Woods and they made it so that way there is a main building. Oh, Shutter Woods never had a shack in the middle of the map anyway. I was on the side. But because of the main building, which is where Skull Merchant's uh, map is, by the way. She is in Shelter Woods. Because it's in Shelter Woods, uh, basically you have a little bit of a different map. And that little bit of a different map can change uh, the entirety of the game. So right here, we're going to go from our, from the hook and add a bit of our Grim Embrace. As a result, every single generator is going to be blocked. But because of Dead Man Switch, once Grim Embrace is done, we can see if anyone on a generator, if it's still highlighted in yellow, and lo and behold, the one right in front of us, highlighted in yellow, which means that someone is over here. And then someone gets claw traps, so I'm like, even better. And I know exactly where they are, and they're slowed down for a long time, thanks to my battle targeting processor. But I know she's going to drop this pallet, but I assumed she was going to, you know, be smart and vault the pallet, but she was like, I don't be smart, I'm gonna go this way. So I'm like, okay. Then she vaults it, I'm like, okay. You kind of vaulted it like an idiot now. But sure. I felt like she was gonna vault it the first time because in my head, I'm like, okay. If I'm slowed down, I clearly want to, what's it called? I clearly want to, um, ah, words. I can't use words today. Sorry, I'm thinking about a lot of stuff all at once. I clearly want to vault and get away from the scrum merchant. So I'm about over. She slowed me down, and she's gonna go around. But no, she, she was like, "I'm gonna keep running." I'm like, "Okay." Then she gets herself second stage on the hook because she's like, "I don't feel like playing a scrum merchant. This killer is too good, and I'm not good enough at the game to deal with scrum merchant right now." So I'm like, "Okay." All the other benefit of this build, by the way, in case you don't know how score trick, uh, how this perk works, basically score trick, gift of pain makes survivors um. I was oblivious. Makes survivors mangled, but the way it works is that they heal themselves or get healed. Basically, they are they have a 16% debuff to, regener to generator speeds for uh, forever until they get injured again. So right here, this girl is going to drop the pallet. It's so obvious, but it makes sense. And I'm going after her. The real reason why I kept going after this girl was because of the fact that I was like, well, I don't have anything to lose. <laughs> They've already lost one uh, survivor, so I lose nothing. And then because she slowed down so much, I don't really have to worry about that hard because he's already injured and angled. And it was great. Also, I plan to make a video. I don't know if y'all want to see this video or not, but I plan to make a video talking about the strengths and weaknesses of Skull Merchant. Let me know in the comments if you want to see make a video about that. Um, the reason why I want to make videos about Skull Merchant, a lot, a lot of videos on Skull Merchant are mostly negative, and I'm trying to post more positive ones. Now to be fair, the negative ones mainly come from pre like Storm Merchant before her rework and they just continue to stay because people hate Storm Merchant. Like there's a streamer I watch, love him to death. But um he hates fighting against Storm Merchant and I can see why. But a lot of people hate fighting against Storm Merchant, but it's not really for the same reason. Oz in his video I, I mentioned Oz again, but Oz in his video said it perfectly. He doesn't mind playing Storm Merchant. But she has like no identity. Now personally I feel like I know I feel like Storm Merchant has a good identity and everything like that. It's more like um you have to figure out how to play her yourself. You don't really need to worry about if she has an identity or not. You just have fun. I have fun playing her. I know how to play her. I have so many strategies. And she can do a lot of things, but you have to actually be willing to put in the work and effort to like her or not. It's not really just and it's not like Wesker where you like, oh, he's fast, cool. And then he just obliterates your soul and then everyone loves fighting against Wesker. Like, no, it's Scar Merchant, a completely different experience. It's like, it's like, she's the best and one of the best, if not only, trapped character in the game. The only uh, the only uh, rule, exception to that rule is, of course, Trapper in the name and Hag. Hag is really good, Trapper is awful, and then a Scar Merchant. Scar Merchant is a trap killer who also can be a M1 killer, where Trapper is a M1 killer. Oh, tra uh, Trapper is a trap killer who can basically not be an M1 killer because his traps are awful on certain maps. And then Hag is a really slow killer who's also a trap killer. And 
that's basically the identity of Skull Merchant. They kind of made her a hybrid trap killer. They realized, okay, putting traps down and using them only to down survivors is really hard to do, and it's never gonna work. Basically, trapper. And then they realized, okay, but having a trap where you can just teleport across the entire map and get a free hit, uh, it's also pretty, it's pretty strong. We don't want that to happen, but also there's a lot of downsides to playing Hag. So that's kind of like, okay, let's make a killer in between. That's why you have Storm Merchant. And I would like that. But they said something, well, Oz said something that was 100% true, and I definitely agree. The reason why people hate fighting a Storm Merchant, but I just gave up, because I give up. The reason why people hate fighting a Storm Merchant isn't even sometimes the Storm Merchant itself, it's really the teammates. Teammates suck. Like, most people don't know how to play against Storm Merchant. So, uh, they just lose if they even stay in the game. Then if they don't, if they um, do stay in the game, what ends up happening is, is the uh, one of them will leave most of the time. So say for example, you either, you either get teammates who literally don't know what they're doing and they die, or you get teammates who know what they're doing but they don't want to fight against Scum Merchant and they leave. Because they leave, you lose the game. It is impossible, kind of, to win against a score merchant when it's a 1v3. It's just not possible. Like, it's especially if they're good. Well, if they're competent. And the reason why it's so difficult is because score merchant, the way you counter a score merchant is to, you know, disable her drones and do gens, like every killer. But the thing is, it's kind of hard to do that when uh, you have one less person. Although it's got to go because I didn't even down him one time. And I felt like it was being nice as uh, <laughs> funny. I'll let him go, but that's my little rant on Score Merchant. Basically, talking about how um, I have a lot of fun playing her, but a lot of people don't have fun playing against her. But in my opinion, it's not even like Score Merchant, it's really their teammates give up. So when you try and play against Score Merchant, you can't, <laughs> so you lose. But yes, that was the uh, second game. Let's go to the last game of the video so I can show you how great this build is. Okay, if it's the last game of the video, we're playing on Torment Creek. So first, I want to apologize for um that giant basically rant. I don't really rant, but the main reason why I brought up the rant of basically like Scrum Merchant player, oh people fighting and Scrum Merchant and leaving, is for literally this game right here, as you'll see. But let's just continue watching before I decide to tell you exactly what's happening. So right here, I hear Sable sound like uh no no. So I grab the table and try and down her as quickly as possible so I can get everyone injured so I can have my Thanaphobia working. And I kind of forgot, I haven't used that man's switch in a long time. Right here, I'm going to mind game. She got to the other pallet. I assumed she was on the other side. So then I just swung. But what happened was she got scared and realized I wasn't coming from that direction. And she went the other way and evolved to the pallet. And as a result, I killed her. I wanted to go for a scorch hook, but the scorch hook is too far away, so I had to go for a regular hook. So I'm gonna hook this girl right here, and then that mess we're gonna activate, and so it's uh, Grim Embrace, and uh, every single generator is blocked. So then I see, I'm like, who is that? And someone gets Cloud Trap, not Cloud Trap, someone gets uh, the scan of my drone, so it's Nicholas Cage. I'm like, oh, okay. So Nicholas Cage is about to get a Cloud Trap on him, he got scanned twice. So I'm gonna put a drone right here, he's gonna try and go away from it because he realizes that he doesn't want to get Cloud Trap. But then he gets Cloud Trap and ties to disable the drone in front of me, and I'm like, what are you doing? Try down him, and I'm gonna place him with a scorch hook. And then, I, as I carry him, I realize that he is not struggling. So I'm like, oh, he must have already given up. I'm fine with that. And as a result, I'm going to hook him, and I'm going to go after this next girl. But because of the fact that I saw a crow move over here, I knew there was someone over here. So I went over here towards the uh, shack, but there was no one there. So I was like, okay. And as you can see, Nicholas here is killing himself on the hook, and I'm like, why? You're the one that decided to do the drone in front of me when I'm chasing you. Why are you trying to kill yourself like it's my fault? I'm confused. Like, I just don't understand people like this. So then, because he's about to die, I'm like, well, his teammates are going to probably save him. I could camp the hook, but honestly, I don't really care if he lives or die. I want to play Scrum Merchant. So I know Stormman over here because of the fact that uh, I saw them. So they're going to save Nicolas Cage, and then I hear this jungle off. I'm like, who is this? The other Sable, someone like, you must die. So I'm gonna chase her before I kick this gen. It makes more sense to kick the gen just in case there's another person who can like do it while I'm chasing her. Break that wall because I'm not trying to deal with that. And then Nicholas Cage has clocks with it. So I'm like, oh, he's gonna heal himself. Okay. And he 
plot twists himself on the ground, and I'm like, great. So I'm going to try and find him, but then they hit me. I'm not going to find him, so I just decided to go chase this girl. But I didn't swing fast enough, so I didn't get the free hit I was looking for. So I'm like, dang it. So I'm going to chase her. Luckily, I did put a drone near the shack, but um, not near the shack, near the... Uh, What's it called? Yeah, near the shack on this side. Then she got rid of it. I'm like, why? And then I noticed the Nicholas Cage got off the ground, but he's injured. So I'm like, what? And I kind of forgot. This is why I plot twist a bad perk. The fact that your teammates will get you off the ground like you're not. Uh, your teammates will get you off the ground even though you have plot twist and then you won't get fully healed as a result, which is kind of funny. So right here, someone's going to break my hook. And I'm like, what? And they're going to like... The, uh, keep making loud noise notifications. I'm assuming it's the Nicolas Cage because it, I just think it is. Then someone gets hit with a drone, so I'm like, okay, it has Nicolas Cage. He's over there. Someone does that gen. I'm like, why? And then right here, I'm like, okay, you're too slow. I'm gonna get a free down. I miss because I'm trash. I know she's gonna drop the pallet, and I'm like, oh. And part of me wants to give up chasing her because of the fact that that really I can't really win. She's pretty good. Also, I'm bad, so that's kind of didn't help me. But then Nicholas Cage gets hit by a drone. I'm like, yay! So I'm going to Nicholas Cage because I'd rather um, go after the person who's injured. But then I see this girl again. I'm like, okay, this time I'm going to down you. So I assumed she was going to vault the window. She did not. And then she decides to just run. I'm like, dang it. And there's no claw trap on her, so I can't even slow her down. So I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is so bad. Like, literally awful. So I'm going to go right here, but there's a pallet. I'm like, oh, why am I even chasing you at this point? And then she's going to drop it. And as you can see, I'm getting obliterated. This does not always happen. But apparently today, I was just doing bad. So I'm going to keep chasing. But I'm not going to win right here because this pallet is actually pretty safe. I am unintentable. She can't see my red stain. But if she has eyes, she can see exactly where I am. Then Nicholas Kid is going to plot twist again on the floor. I'm like, what in the world is happening? Meanwhile, notice how no one has done a single gen in the time I've chased this girl for like three whole minutes. Nicholas Cage is on the floor twice. Both the tables aren't doing gens. Like, I just don't understand. Well, they don't want gen technically. But that was it. I finally downed this girl. And I'm going to hook her on a toy drill. Because that took way too long. And I felt kind of bad because I didn't want it. Um, I didn't really want to chase that girl so long. But I chose to. Now, the reason why, like I said, I bring up the fact that teammates give up. And I want you to look at this game and tell me in any way how it's the score merch. The reason why people lose against score merchant is because of score merchant. It's just people don't want to play. Two Sables aren't doing gents, as you can see. But as you look, you can see that even though um, Grim Embrace is done, Sable is running towards me because she's on the gen and behind me. But she can't do the gen anymore because of Dead Man's Switch. That makes me happy. But as you look, Nicolas Cage is on the ground. And if you, I think you can be on the ground for exactly four minutes before you die. So Nicolas Cage plots with on the ground on purpose to heal himself. But proceeds to not heal himself. Also, he gave up and tried to do the drone in front of me. So in my head, I'm like, okay, Nicolas Cage is throwing. And because I know he's throwing, I don't have to worry about this game anymore. And that is the reason why Storm Murder's win rate is so high. Like, you have survivors like this who just give up. And I don't want my channel or my videos to be like a super, super negative thing. But it honestly just hurts me. Right here, I, this girl definitely has that heart. But the reason why I swung right there was because most people who have that heart will look behind them when they're using that heart. And this is the part where I realized that both the tables were on these gens. Now, the fact that both these gens are literally like two seconds away from each other is kind of insane. I've never seen Jin spawn so close before. But um, because of the fact that I have Grim Embrace for 40 seconds, because I hooked the last person, I was able to figure out which gens they were on. I want to kick both of them the way they can't do them. Well, they can sort of do them, but I want to kick both of them the way they're kind of uh, regressing. And I'm going to have a great time. But it annoyed me because I was just like, this ace isn't my ace. This, uh... Nicholas Cage isn't playing the game, but it's people like him who are the first to get mad at Skull Merchant players and also DC the game because of the fact that the Skull Merchant is um, quote unquote too strong. Right here, I'm not gonna lie, I do not think I hit her, but for some reason, WWE Day was like, you hit her. I don't really understand why, but I'm at it. This game's over anyway, and it's so sad too because as you can see, 
the Sables were both doing gins. Now, personally, I would have done both the, the gins at the same time to make it take less time. But I understand why you want to split the efforts of doing gins. I get it. But it's the fact that one of their teammates is literally useless. And the other three are trying to do something. And the worst part is the girl who I just hooked is actually really good. She looped me really well. Everyone else is pretty good, too. But the fact that their Nicholas Cage just gave up. And he chose to sit on the ground for four minutes instead of healing himself like he can do. It just kind of made me upset. Like, I'm like, why? Like, why are you like this? And I feel like his teammate, like this too, when someone down on the ground, you can literally see them. Right here, I was. she places down her uh, item. So she, I'm thinking, okay, she's going to be nice. And she wants to, um, she wants to, well, I guess I'll let her live, I mean, because she placed down her item. But the reason why I didn't, it's not because of the fact that, oh, I don't want to um, be nice, but it's like the game's, not, the game's already over and <laughs> she's dead on hook. And I still have two more people to kill. So I was like, well, if you're the last person or second last person, sure, but you're not. So also, I really want to kill Nicolas Cage because I was like, yeah, you weren't playing the game the entire time, buddy. You need to die. And I was upset. But like I said, I don't want this channel. Well, it's not going to be like this. I, I do have like little rant videos. The main reason why I rant like this, by the way, is not me trying to like say, oh my gosh, these survivors are so bad, haha. <laughs> no, it's really just me being upset about small little things that happen in Dead by Day, like whether it's like survivors giving up immediately against me or survivors getting mad at me when I outplay them. See, when they disconnect right at the start of the game, okay, I get it. You don't want to fight against Storm Merchant, okay. But when you disconnect because the Scrum Merchant outplayed you, that's just because you're bad. Like, I don't... There's no other word to use. So, yeah, I, that's what this uh, last game was. And that was me showcasing this build. I noticed that I, um... A lot of my videos, I talk about the gameplay, but I also kind of rant at the same time. I don't mean to do that, by the way. Um, but I understand y'all, like, listening to me have different opinions and different things. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about that Nicolas Cage and like different thing when it comes to Scrum Merchant. Because the fact that that Sable had two perks, but she played so well. The fact that um, that Saga, her name is Saga, played so well, but then Nicolas Cage just threw the game. And as a result, they lose. Like, it's just kind of sad. And I feel bad for them. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you don't get teammates like these in your next games. Have a nice day.